Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us for SBB Live. We are here today with music therapist Natalie Gonzalez with Avow Hospice. And thank you so much for joining us today, Natalie. Um, I definitely want to ask you a few questions, and we'll start off with uh, what is exactly a music therapist and what do you do with, with Avow? Oh, thank you so much for having me, Amanda. I'm glad to be here to share a little bit about a vow and a little bit about music therapy, like you said. So a music therapist, actually, there's a lot of educational background that goes into it. Not everyone who loves music or plays music is automatically a music therapist. We actually have a very rigorous training program. It's an educational degree. And then after having practicum and different experiences, clinical opportunities to practice and grow, we then, after four years or more of coursework, sit down and have a, an actual board exam before you become a credentialed board certified music therapist. So the art of music therapy is using music to address a non-musical goal. And that ties in very well to hospice care. I've been with about hospice for almost four years, four years next month, and I'm, I'm very glad and hope to be there for many more years to come. We have a very special job in that we get to use music to encourage people, to uplift people, to help them to find their words, to say their I love you's and their goodbyes. We get to create music together um, and find the ways that it helps with our physiological processes. Maybe that's a chance to remember through some old songs or a chance to help alleviate pain by distracting those cognitive processes. It might even help us to slow our heart rate and our breathing whenever we're feeling anxious or afraid. So music actually plays a really big role in hospice care, in comforting and caring for patients and their families. It sounds like it would play a very critical role right now um, in calming all of us in this very unique circumstance that we're dealing with. <laughs> true. Very, very true. So um, talk to me a little bit about what you're doing now in this, uh, as we said, unique time frame um, to help our seniors uh, to cope with everything that's happening. What a great question. Well, typically on a regular day when, when life looks normal, and that's certainly far from what it looks like today, but on a normal day, we at about have three board certified music therapists and they take to their cars and bring their music to our seniors who are on a vow hospice care. So we might go to patients' homes. We might, we might find us in assisted living facilities or skilled nursing facilities. We also have an inpatient unit on our campus where you can find us. And it looks a little bit different every day. Some days we're writing songs. Some days we're recreating our seniors' favorite songs from decades gone by and we're reminiscing and sharing those memories that come along with the music. Some days we're getting families involved and maybe your the seniors' children or grandchildren are helping us to create the music so that we have those special family memories together. That's what it looks like on a typical day. Right, right now, of course, it looks very different because it's both a blessing and a curse that we aren't able to be physically present together. The beauty of music is that you don't have to be in the same room to experience something. It really can travel across distances and it does the same good for us. It still helps to release endorphins that make us feel happy. Still, when you hear a song that you haven't heard in ages, you get this flood of memories. So really, music is a very powerful tool for us to be using right now because it can cross over so many of these barriers that are in our way. All of that said, we're, we're getting very creative at Avow. Um, I'm thrilled that we are digging deep into our creativity pockets, if you will, to come up with some new ways to support our seniors. We know this can be a really frightening time, just like you mentioned, Amanda. There's a lot of anxiety about being isolated and separated from the people that we love. It's, it's scary and it's very lonely. So we're using music across different platforms just like this, across Zoom, across telephone calls, um, even across recordings. Some of our board certified music therapists are doing song recordings via CDs or via MP3 files that then we can email over to families so that they can know, even though we aren't physically present with you, we're thinking of you and we're trying to find ways to connect with you. So I think that's actually been a blessing, if I can go so far to say that, from coronavirus, that honestly, we're finding really creative ways to connect together when we can't be in the same time and same place. 
Wow. And how do you become a board certified music therapist, if you don't mind me asking? What's no, the- I love being asked. That's a great question. Well, typically it starts off with people who have a love of music and a love of people. And as I mentioned, there is a very rigorous course of study. So um, I, I want to say that there's probably 70 some schools in the United States now that offer a degree in music therapy. So I myself went to school in Charlotte, North Carolina. I have an undergraduate degree in music therapy where I studied for four years the effects of music on the brain and the body, different techniques to use in order to achieve certain goals, lots of psychology, lots of anatomy, um, lots of physiology, and, and just learning how to pair music with those different body processes. And then after you complete four years of study and a six-month in-person internship, you then sit for a board exam, which you have to maintain a certain number of credits every five years so that we can assure that we're putting best practice into place. So it really is, it's pretty rigorous. There's a lot of education that goes into it, but it does so much good for people that it's important that we stay on the up and up, so to speak, with the best practice that's out there and how we can support people using different interventions through music. That's fascinating. It truly is. I never realized I went into um, being a music therapist, but it's, um, I'm so glad that, that it is that way because um, it's such an important tool that you can use with memory and anxiety and depression, as you mentioned. Um, That's cool. Now, would you be um, up for singing a little song for us today? I certainly would. I'm always up for a good song. I've actually been thinking, got my guitar here with me. I know a song from some years gone by, and I think that our seniors might enjoy it. It's also very apropos for everything that's going on today. This is a happy little tune that's called Accentuate the Positive. show again. Thank you so much, Amanda. Be well. Thanks, Natalie.